Okay, the Arrhenius equation. Here, you should know the definitions of these terms. Now, the equation, uh, we know the rate constant is constant uh, for a given reaction uh, at different concentrations, different pressures, but if we change the temperature, we change the rate, the value of the rate constant. So sometimes we want to know what that is because by uh, changing the temperature, we can affect the reaction rate. We know that that's one of the factors. So here is where we're going to be using a change in temperature. Most of the time the reactions are left at one particular temperature, but you might find that your reaction, your rate constant is very small for room temperature, so you increase the temperature until you get the rate constant to be maybe a uh, hundred times faster or, or a million times faster, it depends on what you're after. So this uh, equation will allow us to find out what K will be, what the rate constant will be at a given temperature. So what we're going to do first, this is how these equations work, we're going to use two sets of data, K1 and T1, K2 and T2. So K1 is, is the rate constant at temperature 1, K2 is the rate constant at temperature 2. Having those values and knowing what R is, we know that that's the gas constant, we're going to find the activation energy. Once we've done that, then we're going to take, uh, we're going to determine another K at a different temperature, at a third temperature. So that's how it always works. So what we need to do first is find EA and then find the new K. So uh, that's what we're going to do here. Now our R, uh, the R value that we use, uh, since we're dealing with um, joules or we're dealing with energy, our R value is going to be 8.31 joules per kmol. Now this is the same gas constant as that 0.0821 liters atmospheres per kmol. It looks different because we're using different units, just like 100 centimeters is the same length as one meter, but we use different numbers because it's different units. But if you want to convert that back to uh, 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per kmol, you can. It's, it doesn't take very much effort to, to determine that this is the exact same gas constant, but we need those joules because activation energy is in terms, is, is energy, it's in terms of joules. Okay, so what we do first, is we plug in our values. Now this is, uh, this value, is, that's a K, here's a K. Which one is K1 and which one is K2? Doesn't matter. We'll call this K1. The only thing that, and we'll call this K2, the only thing that matters is that this is T1 and this is T2. You have to group these together. If you mix and match them, you'll come up with the wrong answer because this is one system at 167 Kelvin. This is a second system at 200 Kelvin. If you mix and match, uh, try it, you'll find that you get a different answer. So 167, it's, uh, we're dealing with a gas constant that has units of kelvins, so we have to convert to kelvins. So do that quickly. This is uh, T1 is going to be 440 kelvin. I don't know if I'm on, yeah. And T2, and, uh, let me write out K1 here just to list it. I like to do that when we get a lot of values. T2 is 200 Kelvin, so that's 473, uh, 200 uh, Celsius, which is 473 Kelvin, and K2 is 0.414 inverted seconds. So now we have everything. We have R, we have the two temperatures, we have K1 and K2, so that uh, will allow us to find EA. The only trick here now is to make sure that we um, don't mess up with the algebra, because now it's just a big, uh, big algebra problem, just solving for EA. So we have natural log of K2, K2 is 0.414, and it's inverted seconds, and those are going to cancel because it's, an, a it's a logarithm, so they have to. That argument has to have no units of measure. EA, we don't know, that's what we're solving for. This is 8.31 joules per k mole times 1 over t1 is 440 and I'm going to double check all of the values make sure I have t1 and t2 correctly labeled but let me just do this out first t1 is here t2 is here this is a larger number that goes along with the larger temperature small yep so everything looks good we see that k's cancel uh, the inverted seconds cancel, so we should expect EA to have units of joules per mole. 
and that's that is a standard uh, activation energy. Actually, usually it's kilojoules, and you'll see why because we're going to have a very large number most likely. We'll see. If it's small enough, we can leave it as joules per mole. No, no harm in that. Natural log. So this side is point. 669. This number is larger than this one, so we should expect it to be positive. And, and you hope that it is in this case, because this number, this inverted number, is going to be smaller than this one, so this will be positive. These are both positive, so that makes sense. And if you don't follow what I'm saying, that's all right. I'm, I'm just doing a, a check that I always do. And the more of these you do out, you can see where you're going. You won't, you'll be doing the same thing. You'll kind of guesstimate as you go. And if you don't do that during this course, don't ever feel bad. It did take me a while to get into that habit, but it really is helpful. Let's see. So sometimes it does sound like I'm talking. I guess I am talking to myself the whole time here, but uh, sometimes it, it seems like I'm sort of fading away. It's because I'm not really speaking to you. Uh, I've told you what I wanted you to, to hear as far as the problem. Now I'm just kind of doing this stuff out loud. And I, I'm doing, I, I did this out, I'm, I, I like to do this. If you have a graphing calculator, which in my class you're free to use on the exam, um, you can do all this in one go. I have a, a, um, a uh, scientific calculator here. I'm going to, since we know what these units are going to be, I'm going to leave them off here. And then uh, what we have is 0.669 EA, should we're on there? 0 0.00016 divided by 8.31 and we have 0 0.0000 I don't recommend leaving all those zeros in but since it's just right in the middle of a calculation if I were doing this on the exam I wouldn't do it out every single step like this and that's the other thing I should mention is that when I'm rounding I round after each step even though there's a lot of steps that I'm rounding that I normally wouldn't because I just do them all in one go. So that may throw us off from each other as far as our units of measure. Since this was joules per mole, that's what our answer here will be, joules per mole. And um, uh, if you want to convert to kilojoules per mole, which are the most, those are the usual units, that's what we would end up with. Now I'm going to go through really quick, double check all of my work just to make sure that it looks good because it should be some value that's in the tens of thousands. And that looks good and the only thing I could do is 4.41 divided by 2.21 whoops, damn it, I'm sorry about that, divided by 0.201 uh, log yeah, so that looks good. Now, that's the first step. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot involved in these problems. I'm going to steal a piece of paper here. Now, the second part is they say uh, determine, the act, uh, determine the rate constant at 400 degrees Celsius. So now we know what EA is. I'm going to write it down here. And because we have to keep going, I'm going to convert it back to joules. And you'll see why in a second. Joules per mole. Uh, our, we have a, a new K that is that we don't know, and they, our new temperature, another temperature is, um, I might not be on the sheet, but don't worry, I'll, I'll lift it up here in a second. So we know our, what our new activation energy is, and we don't know K. Uh, we have a new K here, and we have a new temperature. So what they're saying is, now that we know the activation energy, we should be able to find K at any temperature. We found it for 167, or we knew it for 167 Celsius and 200 Celsius. What would it be for 400 Celsius? So let's write out the equation. So we have a, a temperature this new temperature has to go in here somewhere. The new K has to be one of these. What about the other one? Well, he said, well, so we, we know this. We just determined this. We know, we know R. Let's call this one, we'll call it T2. So it goes here. So we'd call this K2. So we have that, or that's what we're going to be solving for. What's T1 and K1? Well, it's one of the pair that we just did. They're all linked together. Uh, they all are, are from the same uh, chemical system. 
So we can use either one. So what I would do is use T1 from above, which is 440 Kelvin, and K1, which is 0.212 inverted seconds. But I could have used uh, 473 and 0.414. doesn't matter. And so, well, we labeled uh, 0.414 K2. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter as long as we, we use the same K, the K2 and K and T2 come from the same system. So we're relabeling uh, now that we have a new problem to do. So really what we want to do is, is have a K1, no K1 and, and T1, and it can be either value from either set of values from the previous problem. We know EA, we know R. We've labeled this new temperature as T2. We could have labeled it at, as T1, doesn't matter. And then we solve for the corresponding K. So we got, it's, it's two problems in one. So when we solve this now, we don't know what uh, K2 is. K1 is 0.212 inverted seconds. EA is 3.47 times 10 to the fourth joules per mole. And uh, R is 8.31 joules k mole. And that's why I converted back, even though I had it in kilojoules, which is the usual units for activation energy, I changed back to joules because I needed that to cancel. T1 is 440 Kelvin. T2 is our new temperature, 673. And then we solve from there. So I had to do this fairly quickly. Um, so we have store. And 673 plus call. And I get for this here, 787 seven, uh, times 3.4, uh, so 3.474 times 0 0.000787 divided by 8.31. And I come up on this side as 3.29er. And no units, because you can see the K's cancel, joules cancel, moles cancel, everything cancels on this side. Then we have K2, 0.212 inverted seconds. We take the antilog of both sides, so this is K2. This is 26.8, so K2 is going to be 26.8 times 0.212. And it's going to be 5.69 inverted seconds. A monster of a problem, but very straightforward in that you just put in the numbers, solve, put in the numbers, solve. So uh, let's go on to the next one. I'm going to trust that everything was right there. This is a, another problem. I'm going to do this much faster. Same problem though, because this is all the only kind of problem that you're going to see on the exam, like uh, of this type of the Arrhenius equation. I give you a rate constant is now it's second order, so the rate constant is uh, 0 0.0515 inverted uh, molars inverted seconds uh, at t is the oh th thankfully I uh, put everything in Kelvin. K2 is 0 0.0767 inverted. Molars inverted seconds. This is T2 is 511. Okay, now um, because it's a different um, type of reaction, it has different units, but they have to be the same so that uh, uh, the K's have to have the same units, even though they're different from the previous problem, they have to cancel. Then we have our equation K2 EA R 1 over T1 minus. 1 over T2, natural log of point 0, I'm going to leave off the units because we know that they cancel anyway. EA, we don't know, this is going to be 8.31, again I'm going to leave off the units because we know what the units for EA should be. T1 is 4, 4, 5, just to clean things up a bit, make it a little quicker to work with. Uh, let me double check, 5, this goes with this one. This goes with this. Now, if we had uh, made this K2 and T2 and this K1 and T1, we'd get the right and we get the same answer. We get EA would still be the same value. If you take this as K1 and this as K uh, T1, then you'd make a mistake. So just stick with the same, the proper corresponding terms. Now, 445, 511, uh, divided by 8.31. And on this side, we get EA 0, uh, I'm going to make this 3.49 times 10 to the minus 5. 
On the other side, 0 0.0677 divided by 0 0.0515, natural log. So this is 0 0.274. And I left off the units, but we know EA is going to end up with joules per mole. I'm going to do redo the problem really quick. Mm -hmm. And then EA is going to be uh, 7.84 times 10 to the third joules per mole. So we have by 3.49. This is where it gets tricky. I hate to waste a lot of time double checking everything, but that's just how it is. So that's our EA. That's the first thing that we wanted to determine. Now they want to know K at 488 Kelvin. That's what's unknown. So we're going to call, we'll make this, uh, I made it K2 last time, I think. Let's just call it K1, just show that we can. K1 is unknown. T1, we're going to consider to be 488K. Now the K2, what are we going to pick that to be? Well, let's use 0 0.0515 and T2. He might, and I, I did this because he said, well, look up here. No, that, that was K1 and that was T1. doesn't matter. It's the uh, same system. We can label it whatever we want as long as we make them correspond. That's K1, T1, K2, T2. Uh, so we wanted a new K1 to, and T1. So we made our old ones K2 and T2. So it doesn't matter as long as we make sure that they correspond. And so we put this in. We have K2 is 0 0.0. Put this into the equation. And um, I'm going to leave in the units this time since we're solving for K1. Uh, and then this is uh, 7.84 times 10 to the third joules. Then we have on the bottom 8.31. If I'm off the page, I'll get back there. K mole. Our T1 is 488 Kelvin. Make sure we get... Uh, and then our T2 is 445. All right, so joules cancel, moles cancel, Ks cancel. So we end up with 488 times 44 divided by 8.31 times 7.84 third. So we end up with on this side point negative 0.187. That negative shouldn't bother you because there's a uh, there's a natural log here. That just means that K1 is going to be larger than than the top uh, the K2. Uh, but double you can always double check to make sure that you you haven't blown it uh, with that. That alone would would make me stop to double check. Um, but since I know there's a natural log on the other side, I, I'm not afraid of a negative number that uh, I know that's probably going to work out. And then we have 0 0.051 molars, inverted molars, inverted seconds, whoops, K1. Take the analog of both sides. And we get 0.829 and 0 0.05. And I'll check make sure I'm on the page here, okay. And then, so that's K1 on this side. And then when we're done, K1 is going to be, let's see, 0 0.0515 divided by 0.829. And this comes up to be 0 0.0621 uh, inverted molars, inverted seconds. I expected the number to be larger. It is. Um, so can't be sure that it's correct, but it certainly is in the ballpark. There's nothing to stop me from believing that that is a number that makes sense. And I'll take that. Voila. And that is the deal.